Um, let's look on page 404. We're just going to start right with some of the problems. Um, Okay, let's look at the first one. The first problem on page 404 says you have the point five negative two and you reflect it across the x-axis. What are the coordinates of that point? So in your book, draw a little grid. Let me get my marker out and I'll show you. And then plot the point five two. Okay, go over five and up two. Mrs. Palmer, what do you mean by a grid? Like, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, a coordinate plane and plot the point, oh, five, negative two, sorry. Five, negative two. So you're gonna go over five, you're gonna go down two. Okay, they wanna know if you reflected that across the x-axis, where would it land? So basically, if you flipped it, you folded it over that x-axis, where would that point end up? You take this, this one's your x-axis, the horizontal one, and reflect it across there. Anybody have any idea where that would end up? Um, Nicholas W? Five and positive, so like five, two. Good. So that's your answer for number one, five, two. So if you reflect a point over the x-axis, your x value stays the same, but your y value changes to the opposite of whatever sign you had. Okay? Let's take a look at number two, where they're probably going to have us flip something over the y axis. Okay? So number two, we start with the point negative six, eight. Okay, so go ahead and plot that point, negative six, eight. So you're going to the left six, up eight. Reflect that across the y-axis. The y-axis is your vertical axis here. So if you were gonna take that point and flip it over, reflect it right over that y-axis, where would that point end up? Where would that be, Serena? Um, <clears throat> I take the point, I'm gonna flip it over my Y axis. Where will it end up? Six, eight. Good, positive six. Um, Mrs. Palmer, I need to do something quickly. Can I do that? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Positive six, positive eight. Okay, so if we flip something over the y-axis, we reflect it over the y-axis, this time our y value stayed the same, but our x value, the sign changed, right? That's gonna happen every time you reflect something over the x-axis and over the y-axis. Okay, Cedric, if you're still listening to me, I can see you doing your sum dog, that's awesome. Dante, I can see that you're logged into some dog, but you're not doing anything. So that's not credit for being in class today. You actually have to be doing your math while you're in math class. Okay. Let's look at number three. Use the coordinate plane. The distance between points A and B. They actually go through a really lengthy way to show you how to find the distance between points A and B for number three. But I want you to go ahead and find point A and B. Okay? And you can really just count how many units apart they are. How 
far apart are points A and point B? Just go ahead and count how many units. Okay. Cassie, are you with me? Because I'm looking at that kitty cat icon. Yeah, I'm with you. Well, I is it on a page or I, I just can't seem to find it. You can't seem to find the problems we've been working on, you mean? Yeah. Are okay. They, are they on page 404? Um, Matthew, okay, we're going back. Okay. Sorry. Matthew, how far apart are points A and B? How many units? Seven. Yeah, seven. You're correct. You really just have to count across. Matthew counted seven units. That's correct. How about points A and C? Point A and C, Nicholas Marks. I apologize to ask this, but um, what number are we on? Four. Plot the record. The distance between point A and point C. Um, the distance between point, between point A and point C. Okay, so point C is about... You're just counting the distance. Count how many spaces between those oh. two points. You four. guys want to put anything fancy? Yep, four, four units. Good. All right, number five says plot the reflection of point C across the y-axis. Okay, you guys see point C there at one, negative three? Plot its reflection across the y-axis. Um, the place where students usually make a mistake is they put it across the wrong axis. So y-axis is your vertical axis, the one going up and down. So you're gonna flip it across that axis. And tell me where it will end up. Where will that end up at, um, Cassie? What? Where will that end up? You mean the answer to that? Yep. The thing that we were talking about? Yep. Um, we're on number five. Oh, we're on, oh. oh, we're on number five. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, let me see. Nathan, I don't think I heard from Nathan yet today. Nathan, where do you think it will end up? Um, Nathan, I think you're muted. Number five? Yes. Yes. I got negative one, negative three, and it's two blocks away. When you reflect that across the y-axis, it will end up at negative one, negative three. Remember, your y value stays the same and your x is just opposite of what it was. So negative one, negative three. So plot that point and it's two units away from the original. You just have to count over. All right, and let's look at number six. If we plot the reflection of point A across the x-axis, what is the distance? So tell me where that would end up. So look at point A. We're on number six, everybody. Point A is at five, negative three. This time, we're reflecting it across the x-axis. Where will that end up? Serena? Five, three. Five, three, good. Now, look at the question it's asking this time. This time, it doesn't say how far apart are the two points from each other, Serena. It's asking how far is your new point from the x-axis? How many units from the x-axis is that new point that you plotted? Five. It's the part where you're going up. So you're at five, but you're counting up. One, two, three. It's three units away. Okay, so that one is three units. 
right, number seven. Um, Matthew, will you read number seven, please? Okay. Um, yo, 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 mm -hmm. walks from the library to the mall. How many city blocks does she walk? All right. What do you think, Matthew? How far is that? Each grid represents one block. Four blocks. Uh, try counting over again from one point to the next. Oh, five. Five blocks. Good. Five blocks. All right. Number eight, Nicholas W. Would you read that one? Sure. Um, number eight. If you <clears throat> if Yoko walks one block in three minutes, how long does it take her to walk from school to the library? How long does it take her to walk from home to school? All right. So first, you're going to have to figure out how far it is from school to the library. How far is that, Nicholas? Um. Seven. Seven. Sure. Blocks. Seven blocks, so they want to know how long would it take her to walk that. It's three minutes a block. Um, 21 minutes. Good, 21 minutes. Okay, let's look at the next part, and I'll give this one to Cassie. Cassie, we're on number eight, uh -huh. the second part of it. How long does it take her to walk from home to school? So how far is it from home to school, Cassie? One and a half blocks. Good. All right. It takes her three minutes to walk every block. So if she's going one and a half blocks, how long will that take? Uh, 4.5 minutes. Perfect. Yes. 4.5 minutes. Good job. Okay. So we're not going to dive too deep into this section, but I did want you to look at, sometimes you're going to see a coordinate plane and you have to figure out the distance inside the coordinate plane. I want us to look at the next lesson in this module also. It is um, on polygons in the coordinate plane. Okay, so sometimes we'll see polygons drawn inside a coordinate plane. Um, I want you to look at page 409. Okay, I want you to look at that with me. Page 409. The directions for that tell us the vertices of a polygon are, and they give us a bunch of points, L, M, N, O, and P, and Q. They want us to graph the polygon and find the area. So you guys have been working with polygons and finding the area of polygons. So sometimes they might not show you a diagram of a polygon. They might give you the coordinates of their vertices and you have to sketch it. So go ahead and graph those points and sketch that polygon. I'm going to sketch it on my whiteboard and hold it up. We'll see if ours look the same. Okay. So do number three on page 409. Draw that sketch. You're going to find the point L over one up to M. Okay. 
I see some of you are done. It should look sort of like that. All right. That is polygon LMNOPQ. What kind of shape is that? Let's see. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, six. It has six sides, so it's a hexagon. Okay, they want us to find the area. All right, well, remember when we worked with um, polygons that weren't just um, shapes that we knew how to find the area of, we broke it up into shapes we could find the area of. So let's just draw a dashy line across right there, and we could break this up into a rectangle and a trapezoid, all right? So now we have a rectangle and a trapezoid so we could find the area. Find the area of this rectangle and then find the area of the trapezoid and add them together. So let's work on that. So now you're using what you learned or what you looked at in the first module to see what is the length and the width of this rectangle? Well, the length, I have count my spots and it looks like my length is six. And my width is four. Okay. So my rectangle has a length of six and a width of four. What's the area of that rectangle? Serena? 24. Good. 24. Okay. But we're not done, right? We have to find the area of the trapezoid. Oh, no. We have to remember that formula for area of a trapezoid. That was one half times the height times the quantity of base one plus base two, right? So we need to figure out the height. How tall is that trapezoid? Matthew, how tall is it? Um, how tall is the trapezoid piece? Uh, this is Nathan. Do you know how tall the trapezoid is? You're muted for. Oh, there you go. You even made the fire Which escape? Which trapezoid? The one on number three? Yes. It is two units tall. Good. It's two units tall. Okay, Nathan is right. And then we have to find the bases. The bottom base is two units long, and the top base is six units long. So we just fill those into our formula. One half times the height, which is two, times the quantity, meaning we have to add it together, base one plus base two, two plus six. So two plus six is eight. Eight times two is 16, and half of that is eight. So our trapezoid is eight units. And we add that all together. The rectangle and the trapezoid and Nicholas Willoughby, what is our area? 32. That's it. 32 units. Good job. Okay, so I'm going to give you some of these to work on. And you're going to graph the points for number one on page 410. And then tell me what kind of a shape it is. And then you'll have to figure out the length of each side and then the area. And then number four, the first one for one, two, and three, it's just a very common shape, easy to find the area. Number four, it's going to be kind of a weird shape, something different. So that one, um, I'll be interested. I'll tell you, I'll give you a hint. You might want to jot it down in your workbook right now. It's a letter of the alphabet. So when you're plotting the points for number four, you should end up with a letter of the alphabet. And then you'll find the area of that. 
Okay, and then answer number five, because that's a pretty uh, easy question, but it's how I want you to think about how do I do these problems? What should I do? So you just write down the steps for solving them. So okay, the so whole page. Page 410. 410, but also, except for Nicholas Willoughby, I need your answers to those assessment questions that you were supposed to send me by five o'clock on Friday that I told yeah. you about. And then I put it on Parent Square and it said, send it to me by five o'clock on Friday, but I don't have them. Do you guys check with mom and dad for your homework for like what they see? Serena, I have yours. Okay. They do. All right. So yeah, double check. But for tomorrow, page 410, this will be your last Monday of doing math homework. Hard to believe. I'll miss you next Monday. We could log on just to say hi if you want. Can we do that? <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah, guys, let's let's meet at uh, like 830 maybe. <laughs> okay. All right. Have a good day. Let me know if you have any questions. Bye. Okay. Bye. Miss Palmer. Yes, Nicholas. If we're you though, I want to ask you something. Sure. Um, so I was checking Radiker and do you know uh what the class homeroom is? Do you, uh, what do you mean the homeroom? Like, well, on Reddit, all like, um, it says like the classes. Mm -hmm. What is homeroom? Homeroom is just, um, we didn't technically have homeroom because you guys stayed with me, but homeroom would be like you, sixth grade's my homeroom. So, say you had homeroom from 755 to 805, but then you went to like science. So homeroom is just like when you come in in the morning and I take attendance, but we don't do attendance in that homeroom. Um, we just do it at a different part of Redeker. So you probably don't have any grades or anything in homeroom, right? Uh, no, it just says they got an F in it. <laughs> I think I saw that too. Uh, that doesn't, that's not even on the report card. I'm not sure why anything showed up in homeroom. Usually it's blank. And I went in to put your guys' grades in for math, but I hit homeroom. And uh, I saw that, like, you weren't the only F, like everybody's got Fs. And I was mm -hmm. like, I don't even know why there's grades in here. So I'll have Mr. Gilger take a look at it and figure out what's going on in our homeroom. Maybe somebody like hit some setting where now it looks like you guys have no grades in there, but you don't have any grades because you don't get graded in it. It's just for attendance. Okay, yeah, thanks. <laughs> My mom and I were looking at it and we we're like, what? what? I'm sorry, yeah, no, you do not have an F in homeroom. Okay. <laughs> Okay, have a good day. You too. Bye-bye.